Dr. Uche Blackstock joins us now. She is the CEO of Advancing Health Equity and a medical contributor to Yahoo News. Our friend Aaron Haynes is here as well, editor at large at the 19th and an MSNBC contributor. I, I want to ask you, I want to put the statistics out because they tell a pretty disturbing story. This is the number of black Americans who have died. Tragically, it's at a rate 28 percent higher than white Americans. And the New York Times reports this, this, although low-income communities of color have been affected disproportionately by the coronavirus, health officials in many cities say that people from wealthier, largely white neighborhoods have been flooding vaccination appointment systems and taking an outsized share of the limited supply. I have two questions for you, Dr. Blackstock. One, who's, who's responsible for making sure that isn't the case? And two, where's the flaw in the system that allows that to, to still happen now that it's been identified and reported on? Well, part of the problem is that states are not reporting full racial and ethnic demographic data on who is being vaccinated. So we need uh, our federal administration to hold states accountable for that data. That data must be reported so that we can target outreach efforts to those communities who are most in need. And what we're seeing now is uh, disproportionately Black Americans are not being vaccinated. And that's not just about uh, what, quote unquote, vaccine hesitancy. Uh, we're seeing that people who are non-residents coming into Black communities uh, to be vaccinated, and that's unacceptable. We need accountability and we need transparency in the vaccination distribution process. Aaron, I want to read something that you guys are reporting on the 19th. You write this, um, or your colleague writes this. For Black women and Latinas, there are particular concerns about historical discrimination by the healthcare system and fears that people will be offered new vaccines early, uh, early on, not because they're safe, but because of a medical legacy of using people of color as subjects for experimentation. It feels like we will look back in the summer if this inequity continues and feel like all the pieces were in public. They've been reported by reporters like yourself, the vaccine hesitancy and the lack of transparency that the doctor's describing. What is the, what is the intervention needed right now, Aaron? Well, you know, I think that, that it is right for folks like Dr. Blackstock to be raising the alarm, even as we only have early data, you know, what, what we do, uh, what we are starting to see should be alarming for anyone that is concerned about this vaccine rollout uh, happening uh, happening equitably, or at least more equitably than, than uh, this pandemic has been, uh, especially for black and brown communities. And, and yes, I thank you for, for uh, highlighting Shafali's reporting. I encourage everyone to go to 19thnews.org and read uh, her reporting. I mean, she just reported two thirds of black, and la black women and Latinas don't know where to get a COVID vaccine. And so even if they overcome, you know, the historical skepticism uh, from our federal government or from our healthcare system, uh, they don't necessarily have uh, regular access to a physician who maybe would steer them towards those resources, and they don't, uh, and, and they are disproportionately underinsured. And and these are the folks who are uh, the essential workers in our society: the grocery workers, the retail workers, the child care workers, the frontline health care workers. And so, you know, really, uh, you know, what I was wanting to ask Dr. Blackstock because I read your uh, your editorial with great interest. A couple of things: one. Uh, you know, how effective do you think that, that Vice President Harris can be uh, as not only the second most powerful person in the country, but also a black woman in using her lived experience to kind of, uh, you know, overcome some of those challenges that I just mentioned? And also, is it time for the administration to get serious about uh, really getting clear about how many uh, of the hundred million doses in the first hundred days? Should, should, uh, what is their goal for those getting into black and brown arms? No, Erin, you bring up two really great points. Now, one of the points that we made in our Washington Post piece is that Black Americans need to be prioritized for these vaccinations. There's no doubt about that, given the legacy and current day systemic racism in this country. But we also need, as, as you alluded to, trusted messengers. We need people, um, not just uh, healthcare professionals of color, but we need trusted messengers in the community, uh, barbers, faith leaders, even need our, our vice president to be out there with messaging that's culturally responsive, targeting our communities to encourage people to take this vaccine, because the vaccine is going to be really our only way out of this pandemic nightmare. 
Uh, I have another question for you. I, what is the sort of need to innovate on distribution? Because it seems like one of the hurdles is that you know, a stadium in a neighborhood in which you don't live is really not that accessible for any elderly person. And I, and I wonder whether people need to start thinking outside the box of going door to door, if home health nurses with some sort of refrigeration need to go to offer the vaccines door to door. I mean, where is the forum for, for brainstorming, not just getting the needle in the arm, but getting the healthcare provider to the front door so they can make the case, deal with any concerns and lack of trust, and then offer to do it in the comfort of someone's home, Dr. Blackstock. Right. Right. We, we need our local and state departments of public health to work with community messengers around this outreach. What really we should be having is community health workers going door to door, educating people, helping to make appointments uh, for vaccines for, for elderly individuals. We need mobile vaccination units. We need people to have transportation to these mass vaccination sites. You know, we need the resources. Hopefully in the relief bill, it'll eventually trickle down to state and local departments, but they need the funds and the resources to make this happen and to develop the infrastructure needed. Because in a, in a few months, once the vaccine is available to the public, we need people who are willing and able to take it. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.